heard about a mug cake, but apparently there's like a whole culture surrounding mug cakes and that they're really great. And there's even a book I found called 101 Gluten-Free Mug Cakes. I'll post the link, don't worry about it. Um, I've never made a mug cake. I'm actually dividing the recipe in half because I don't know if my coffee mugs are big enough. But we're just gonna try. Like, I don't, honestly, I don't really know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna follow the recipe, which hopefully will work out. Okay, so start with some cooking spray. One. Uh -oh. uh. <laughs> Two. Okay, that's easy. Good enough. Okay. Then we mix the flour, hot chocolate mix, and salt into the mug. Okay, so I'm going halvesies. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of flour in each. Now, I don't know if mug cakes are an exact science. I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. This is my exciting Camelas products. Um, measuring thingamahoozit. If you've ever been to a gluten-free expo where Pamela was, I'm sure you got one of her little nifty nifty gadgets. Um, mine is actually still labeled gluten-free from my old apartment that wasn't all gluten-free. Okay, I guess I'm gonna need more than one thing of hot chocolate mix because it calls for six tablespoons and this packet is, we're gonna say three. That looks about right. I'll be, I'll Rachel Ray this. Okay, let's, hmm, mystery. Okay. Let's do this one. I wonder if you guys at home make mug cakes. I wonder if I'm the only one who didn't know about mug cakes. I'm sure this video will go up and everyone will be like, oh my gosh, I've been making mug cakes for years and made them at camp. Like, okay. A little salt, just a little pinch. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And now we're gonna stir all of this up. Um, just mix it. And um, you know to store gluten-free flours in the fridge or the freezer, so um, that the flowers are a little more volatile, so they tend to go rancid um, quicker. So when you store them that way, um, it keeps them from going bad. Let's see here. Okay, that looks mixed. Now next, crack egg into mug. Now here is really where my cameraman and I couldn't decide. We're gonna have these. We're gonna have these on the egg. So we're gonna put a half in here, and that may be wrong. That may be very wrong. But we'll see. Okay. We went have these. Now, okay, stir a bit after adding the egg so cup doesn't overflow. I'm stirring. It looks like a. It looks. <laughs> it looks neat. <laughs> okay, so that's that's that angle. Awesome. We're gonna stir this guy. Guys, what if this is really funky? Hopefully it's fine. Okay, next we add water and oil. Hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so three. This one looks better. <laughs> There's no exact signs to mug cakes, I've decided thus far. because I'm not really specific. One and a half. Okay. And then we do the same thing with the oil. I think one got more egg than the other. But that's cool. So it's three tablespoons of oil total. So we'll do one and a half in each. And, okay, stir thoroughly and put mug in microwave. Let's check this out, people. Okay, I'm just do a little stir stir. Um, here's the tricky thing. I only put in three tablespoons each and I need to do one and a half more on each. This is how we bake here. 
Okay. Here's my other tablespoon. Guys, we do a little rinse. No worries. This is how real people bake. This is why I'm not on the Food Network, because I don't have it all together, people. You know what else I don't have? Hair and makeup. So if anyone is looking for a side job, I'm really, really into that. So nine divided by two is four and a half, correct, Bo? Yes. Excellent. So we'll go have these here. Perfect. You know, I'm gonna let this other, <laughs> this other one just kind of chill for a little bit. I'm just gonna let it hang out while I work on this one. This one looks about right. Okay. It looks like batter. So for one thing, it says, when I made one recipe, it says to do it for three minutes. We're going to go for two. Let's see what happens. Sounds like mug cake. Okay, people. It smells like very hot, hot chocolate. We see it in here. Okay. Onto a plate, so I'm just gonna get a fork to get it out. Um, okay. Oh, mug cake! <laughs> it's kind of funky looking, but it said to break it up so you can get the steam out. Steam away. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do a little something special. Yep, ready with 15 cal situation here. If I were really fancy, I would dust a little um, Dutch chocolate powder on top, but I'm, I'm not that fancy. Okay, people. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little apprehensive about eating the mug cake. Okay. to have like a gooeyness to it, but it's really not. It's actually pretty airy um, and fluffy, kind of like um, a warm angel food cake or sponge cake, but it's chocolate, and anyone who knows me knows that chocolate and I are in a monogamous relationship, and we love each other very much, um, and it's really good. I think a mug cake will be really good for... Um, Hopefully I will have some mug cake remaining by the time the segment's over. Um, mug cake would be really good for like an after school snack for a kiddo and you just want to pop something in and help have them make it. I mean seriously, if I can make it, your children can certainly make it. They're probably more skilled in the kitchen than I am. So um, I like the mug cake. I'll put a recipe up. I'll link you to this cookbook, 101 Gluten Free Mug Cakes. And that's all I've got for now. I'm going to go back to my mug cake. I'm glad I already had dinner because I'm going to nom on this for a while so hope everyone's doing well out there i hope you will watch another video of mine <laughs> at this point it's debatable so hope you're doing well as always it's from have not to have and gluten-free dining bye